Hey, it's time for VoiceOver Body Shop once again. And we've got a great show tonight uh, because we got a prime guest. Not that every guest isn't prime, but this guy was Optimus Prime. <laughs> no, he was well Megatron. Played, and Yeah, I'm sorry. You, <laughs> well, both. Both. They, both. They played both, both of them. See, yes. <laughs> see, I, I, I don't even stand corrected. I'm right. David <laughs> K is with us tonight. <laughs> David, wave hi. Say hi. How are you? We're good. We're good. How are you? Yeah, right. We're going to talk about all sorts of cool stuff. If you've got a question for him, throw it in our chat room, uh, whether on Facebook or on YouTube. And uh, we'll get to those questions in just a little bit. So stay tuned. George, you ready to roll? I'm ready to go. It's time for Voice Over Body Shop right now. From the outer reaches, they came. Bearing the knowledge of what it takes to properly record your voiceover audio. And together... From the center of the VO universe, they bring it to you now. George Widom, the engineer to the VO stars, a Virginia Tech grad with the skills to build, set up, and maintain the professional VO studios of the biggest names in VO today. And you, Dan Leonard, the voiceover home studio master. A professional voice talent with the knowledge and experience to help you create a professional sounding home VO studio. And each week, they allow you into their world, bringing you talks with the biggest names in the voiceover world today, letting you ask your questions, and giving you the latest information to make the most of your voiceover business. Welcome to VoiceOver Body Shop. VoiceOver Body Shop is brought to you by VoiceOverEssentials.com, home of Harlan Hogan Signature Products, Source Elements, remote studio connections for everyone, VoiceActorWebsites.com, where your VO website isn't a pain in the butt. VOHeroes.com, become a hero to your clients with award-winning voiceover training. JMC Demos, when quality matters. And VoiceOver Extra, your daily resource for VO success. And now, live to drive from their super secret clubhouse and studio in Sherman Oaks, California. Here are the guys. Well, hello there. I'm Dan Leonard. And I'm George Widom. And this is VoiceOver Body Shop. Or VO BS. Oh, you know, it, it's it's like time to roll. The, the, the intro ends and suddenly it's like showtime. We're always on. exciting. It's always fun the to be live. The hard part's remembering where to look. Yeah, look yeah, in that little it's round that, thing. This thing right there. here. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's the, that's the important part. <laughs> uh, but we we have some cool stuff to talk about tonight, and uh, you know we have a great guest, and uh, it's beautiful weather here in Southern California, except that it's allergy season because all the citrus is in bloom. So, it's pretty brutal if you have our allergies here right yeah, now. Yeah, I know. I'm like, oh, do I have COVID? Do I, you know, and the, the, George and I find out I'm taking a COVID test, and it's like totally negative. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> I'll be doing mine later. Oh, okay, good. On the and, air. And I want the and yeah, and I, and I want the results because we were all in here yesterday. <laughs> anyway, it's time to introduce our guest. He has a heart out at uh, at 545, so we want to make sure we have a full amount of time with him. Get to it. Uh, it's right. David K was the voice of Megatron in Beast Wars, Beast Machines, Armada, and Energon, Energon, Energon. I I don't watch that. Uh, and Cybertron, as well as Optimus Prime in Transformers Animated. David was also cast in some of the first of hundreds of animated shows and video games. So he's been doing this a while. He's like at the, you know, the the uh, foundation of all this. So, so many, in fact, he's now become the main focus of his career and he's never looked back. Animation is great. Let's welcome back to uh, VoiceOver Body Shop our good friend David Cave. Hey! Good, good to yeah. see you. Thank you the for thing, joining us. The single clap. That's pretty much my life. That's yeah. good. <laughs> sort of like a golf right. clap. You yeah. Know? That's it. And and it's I don't, in your headphones, too. It is, Just yeah. a clapping I don't, I don't, sound uh, in, in your headphones. And I don't wear this normally. I, I have to scoot <laughs> off to a thing and that I that I really don't want to go to, but I paid for it, so I'm, i got to go. <laughs> oh, you can do that. <laughs> Otherwise, it'll be in my pajamas. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, welcome back to the show. We haven't had you out in a long time, uh, you know, but uh, I, graciously, you've, you've joined us again. And now, you've had a great career, but, you know, you're from my old neck of the 
the woods. Uh, you're from Peterborough, Ontario, uh, home of the Peterborough Peets. Uh, <laughs> just north of the border. <laughs> you're just north of the border. Well, it's, it's like northeast of Toronto. You know, mm-hmm. as, as they say, but well, uh, you were in Buffalo, so how was that in relation to Buffalo? So I, well, I grew up on I grew up on Buffalo Television. I grew up right. with Commander Tom. I grew up, you know, Promo the Robot. Uh, I get those cartoons. Uh, I mean, all of it. Captain Kangaroo. I watched, you know, WKBW TV Eyewitness News with Irv Weinstein. I grew up on it. You know, I was. Uh, I didn't watch Canadian television. So I want to be a part of that. You know, I, mm. I love Buffalo t- TV and the personalities. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. yeah. And that was the cool thing there was everybody had to rotate their antenna one way or the other. If I wanted to watch a hockey game on Hockey Night in Canada and listen to you know Bill Hewitt or Foster Hewitt, hello Canada, you know, I would have hello, to do Canada that. Around. Yeah. That's right. Well, what, what what was Canada broadcast like at that time that made well, was... American broadcaster Buffalo so intriguing? What was it like? Well, I was I was going to going to school for for radio broadcasting and, and communications um, across the border from uh, Agdensburg, New York, and uh, we used to you know uh, uh, and we used to listen to the WPXY, I think, um, all those stations up up up, up you know, it, it, and uh, it just sounded bigger. And I found out later that they they use level devils and, and compression and <laughs> yeah, and and it just sounded like why does it sound so cool and big and important? And then I, I would go to work when I was 17 or 18 years old and it sounded like like coming out of a tin box. And, you know, and I got in trouble one night because uh, Eddie, 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 Eddie Compton, the uh, Crompton, Eddie Crompton, the engineer was this guy and, and God love he uh, he was uh, he had a, a, a temper like a, and I it was like the third or fourth day on the uh, night on the job, Saturday overnight weekends. And I was didn't know what I was doing and I was horrible. And. And I, I said, screw this. I was talking to my buddy on the phone, and I actually, there's an there's a equalizer EQ in the transmitter, and I was in the studio, mm-hmm. and I, I started bumping up the uh, the bass. Oh, don't touch that stuff. <laughs> and at 2 in the morning, I'm sitting there and just, you know, rocking out the, the AM signal, and I don't know what, I, and, and the door's like 2 a.m., wham! And it said, don't you ever touch that. No. You don't touch. And I was like, Holy shit! You know, like a kid. I'm like a kid, and it's just adult coming and screaming at me two in the morning, and so I didn't touch the. Uh, it, I, and it just drove me nuts. Why can't we sound big when poor? So I didn't know the technicality of it all. I just wanted to sound better. Yeah, <laughs> so I had like even the back then I had an ear like I did. I knew that you know something sucked and I didn't like it. How come? How come they sound good? And so that drove me nuts. And so. Um, from a very young age, and the fact that I couldn't order anything from the back of a comic book and get it to my house in Canada, uh, I remember the, when I first moved to Burbank, and I said, hey, you know what? I can order wine. I can order gimmicks and jokes in the back of comic books, and I can get them in my house for like $5, you know, whatever it was. And and and, and all the radio stations sounded really cool. So anyway, that was just my goofy thing uh you know in the it's business. cool to hear it from your perspective from canada like he's you yeah hear that you know, i mean it's, look the, ra- the radio was great and, and cftr in toronto had great you know tom records landecker was on, on there and, and and you know this there's some amazing personalities in toronto and well we all know the talent uh, in canada yeah. is amazing there's yeah, so much talent Cooper radio in was, here vancouver radio was incredible with the fox and and you know lg in the morning zoo and uh, i played a part of that and that was a riot um and so it, it was the basis that Danny, you and I talked. It was the basis, the foundation. My greatest memories of, of my life uh, were from things of radio, like the ski team or the goofy stuff, trouble right. music, and all those radio stories, all the things. <laughs> that was uh, the, the the greatest moments of uh, my life came from that business. You know. Yeah, it was fine. It was it was when you were young, didn't have a lot of responsibilities, and. You know, you'd, sometimes yeah. you could get this the station van and drive around town in that. That was always great. Yeah. Especially when it was parked in front of your house. <laughs> yeah, the road pig, we called it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, anyway, so you, how did you transist from there into doing Strictly voiceover? You've also done some screen acting, too. Uh, yeah, it was. Well, it was it was Vancouver. Like, I mean, I was in uh, Brockville. We call it Brock Vegas. Yeah. Um, <laughs> And uh, I worked, uh, did morning show there, and you know Peterborough, the uh, CKPT, the worst call letters in the world, it doesn't exist anymore, I don't think. Um, you know, I went out out, uh, out west to. Uh, I worked in London, BX ninety three in country. Had no no idea what country music was, but they hired me for the afternoon drive, and uh, yeah, I had a great experience there for uh, for a little while in the early eighties, and and uh, ended up in Vancouver or mid eighties. Ended up in Vancouver in eighty nine, and uh, as part of the morning. I think I went out to do middays or evening. I can't remember what I did. I did all, all, 
all this, the day parts, but I ended up in the morning zoo as part of the, the team. I started doing comedy and songs and pretty character, cowboy dick, howdy boys and girls, and play a little song, you know, and, and develop these things. And it was so much fun, and the energy was great. But getting up in the morning really early at like 4 o'clock to get to work was just – that's not me. And I remember being sitting there, there's four or five of us in the, 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 uh, the, the zoo master, you know, Dean, Dean Hill and Bob and everybody. And, and, and it was uh, the music, the first song would play and I'm sitting there trying to wake up and he says, okay, Dave, what do people, what do we got? What do we got? I'm like, Oh my God, I just want to go back to, I, I have nothing. <laughs> I think. That's mornings. Yep. Uh, so, uh, but I, I, I loved it. And the transition came when, down the road when radio started to kind of be sold off, you know, the, the, the corporate uh, thing was starting to happen and uh, it started to be less fun and more corporate -y and, and, and uh, the writing was on the wall. And I started at that time, I had a friend who was an agent and he started sending me out on stuff on camera. And then I got my first uh, 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 animation audition. You know, I was a big fan of comic books and, and cartoons as a kid anyway. So they, uh, my age says, Hey, do you know, do you do voices? And I said, you know, yeah, sure. I didn't know what he's talking about. <laughs> uh, he said, well, I got this audition for you. It's uh, it's for GI Joe. And I think GI well, Joe, well, I had those dolls. I watched the show. And, and so I went in and I did this and I really didn't really didn't know what I was doing. And it was uh, just, you know, quick, follow me toward the danger. It was the old Joe. And I just, I don't know. Uh, and, and somehow they called me back. And I read for a few parts, but I, I ended up getting cast as the as General Hawk. And and from that moment on, being in the studio like it's a radio play, and with all the all all at that time, my heroes in, in VO and Vancouver, I knew that these car, the cartoon people, you know, it was a very small, tight knit group. And the fact that I got in there was just a, it, it was a miracle. But somebody liked what I did, and from that moment on, I would go back to the. I remember doing doing the show at, at LG, and I would literally. The monkeys were on MTV, and I was like, when we had the that system where you just the computer would take over, and I would literally, you know, uh, boom, the Don LG seventy three, boom, and I'd you know, I'd sit, I just sit there and watch TV, and I was like, I had I had no interest in being there, and it was like, I didn't want it, and uh, so they called me into the office one day. I'm paraphrasing, but it, you know, this is this is 93, 90, uh, early ninety four. and uh, Chris Chris Pandoff says, you know, you don't really want to be here, do you? And I said. You know what? Not, not really. <laughs> <laughs> so, so he said, uh, you know what? Let's, uh, you know, yeah, listen, you know, blah, 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 yada, yada, yada. Uh, and uh, it's uh, been a great, uh, you know, so, so why don't we just, you know, say, listen, this two weeks and we'll, you uh, know, I know you're busy and doing stuff because I was starting to get commercials, starting to get things. And I was really, really focusing on, OK, I want to do this for the rest of my life. And uh, I remember that night I went, OK. We're done. Two weeks. We're out. And 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 I went home. Uh, poor Maria. I think she was pregnant at the time. And I <laughs> was down. I had had a studio in my house as well because I was beginning to do affiliate work at that time uh, in the uh, in the mid nineties. And uh, when websites were just beginning to take off, and I had reel to reels and trying to make FedEx and that. And I finished my day. And and I said, you know, I got a bottle of three quarters of a bottle of Glenlivet in the. I, you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna celebrate. I'm gonna get it's it's just the beginning of a something special. And I had, and in two at two in the morning again, uh, two a.m. seems to be a thing. Uh, I had finished the entire bottle in my studio, and I, I somehow made it upstairs. <laughs> and I remember, oh, I think I was sick. And Maria was like, "What's going on?" I'm like, ah, ah, ah. you know. Um, and I woke up the next morning thinking, <laughs> "I'm an alcoholic. What the hell have I done? I'm oh my god." So I called my best friend Greg. I said, "I, I don't know what's going on, man. I, I, I think I'd finished the bottle." He said, "Well, you." Do you, do you, I think I'm an alcoholic. He says, do you do this all the time? I said, no, it's the no. first time I've done this. <laughs> and he laughed. He said, you're not an alcoholic. He said, get dressed. They'll pick you up or go to the Tomahawk for a greasy breakfast. This amazing breakfast place in North Vancouver. And that was it. That was the, basically the umbilical cord was cut. And it's like, all right, now I'm on my own. This is it. It's all up to me. And I much preferred that because I, I love uh, sports and things and situations where the pressure is just on me. It's not about it's anything. It's it's like it's up to me to to to, to do this. And then hmm. the, and then the baby happened. I go okay. Now I have a real purpose. And then the the the, the flame. I will call it the blue pilot light is on, and it's ready to roll. And it's always on. It still is. It's always on. It's never it never never goes off. And that's yeah. sort of when that happened. And I did all I can. I started doing theater and I started getting auditions and I got a, you know, a couple of parts. I, I was a horrible actor on camera, but, you know, X-Files and a few things and had a fairly half decent thing. But the voiceover stuff started to really happen. 
and then you know i'm going on here dan but this is kind of just kind of i was gonna uh, jump in here and interrupt any second yeah but please i just stop me but that's just that's (laughs) sort of how it transitioned from radio out out into the you know uh what i what i just admire love doing more than anything in the world yeah clearly you know um I just want to remind everybody, if you've got a question for David K, we're going to get into a few more interesting things here. Uh, throw it in the chat room. I know Jeff Holman is hiding in there somewhere and taking down your questions, and we'll get to the him uh, and those questions in our next segment. So you, you were able to do a little bit of screen acting, too. Do you think that helped you a little bit more with your voice acting or no, vice versa? No, no, I was horrible on camera. I said, oh, okay. Sometimes I see myself <laughs> on Happy Gilmore. I'm like, oh, my God. God, why? what possessed <laughs> them ever to put me? But it was the theater and it was the improv and it was all that stuff that started to get me out of my head. And I always, mm. you know, and fast forward to that, you know, I, I mean, I, I do the trailers and promos and then there's there's animation and then there's commercials and then there's a radio and TV. Film. There's all these different sort of things like in a Swiss army knife where a certain uh, skill, you know, you pop it up and the thing comes up and it's time to do that. Um, I, I learned that from 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 improv and, 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 and theater and and. Uh, um, what was my point? I was going to make some some brilliant, uh, masterful point, and, and I've, I've forgotten it. I'll, I'll remember it. But it was something I said, oh, yes, everything you do, everything uh, has, to, has to be a living, breathing uh, soul. It has, the character has to, has to exist. You know, it, has to, it has to have a, a heart and a soul and, and, and a laugh and a breath. And it, 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 so that the, the more truth you can bring to anything you do, the more human you can even a promo is it's it's thinking of who you're talking to and that's dan it's the old radio thing where you know envisioning who it is is listening and you i I still see that i still see exactly who i'm trying to communicate to it's a very clear picture and and um and that helps me you know bring the the truth to the character and and it's um and i i play it's like a game to me to try and to get to that point because i i was never satisfied with okay good mediocre oh that's fine i fucking hated that word oh that's fine Fuck. i want to make how do we how do we make it excellent and great how do i get to that point so that's been my lifelong thing and, and you never get there it's a it's like it's a continual you know it's a, it's a so it's you work at it and and uh, i love the challenge and every day's different so yeah well you, you've had some great parts i mean you now you you well, we won't talk about this very long, but you yeah. you got this role of Megatron and, and Optimus Prime with the transfer. That was quite a quite a franchise for a while, wasn't it? Yeah, I had no idea what we were getting into, but we just did. <laughs> I just did a convention this weekend in Burbank, and this you know, there's thousands of people that, that still to this day, I'm still being paid for this damn cartoon, and I was we did it in '94. Um, the the coolest. See, here's another thing, and that's it's awesome. I, I really didn't know, but. For me as a kid, a 12-year-old boy, I got cast this past year in, in Eternals as, as, as Airshem, the, the, the thing. Now, I remember as a 12-year-old reading that comic, and it was a little-known Jack Kirby comic. And so for me personally, seeing that in the movie theater, um, like the hair on the back of my comes, I'm thinking, oh, my God, because this is my – this – here I'm in my 50s, and I'm like, this is I'm a ch- it's my childhood. This is how – how the hell did this happen? You know, I, I, I don't know. Uh, I just uh, don't ever grow up just uh, the, the, to be to be to, to get up every morning and go, hey, it's a new day. What the heck? And to be a new soul every day is important in this business, too. Cause, no question. Uh, yeah. yeah. My wife's the same way. It's like, when are you going to grow up? <laughs> what are you no, going to do when you grow never, up? Never. <laughs> We're doing hey, it. You know. George, uh, George what's, what's you know, uh, Dan, what's the, the uh, I, I, oh, my gosh, I've, I'm drawing a blank here. I took a class with her when she's brilliant. She teaches trailer. You know, uh, Maurice. Maurice. Maurice oh, Tobias. 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 Yeah. So she's the w- one person who called me out. Because I, I took a class with my buddy, with, with Howie. Remember how, you know, Howie? Howie took a weekend workshop before he moved to Los Angeles. And I was down here. And I said, okay, I'll take it. I'll take a workshop. And, you know, it was promo. And I said, okay, I got to brush up and do some stuff. And she, she gave me some copy. And I'm thinking, okay, you know, I don't know. You know, tonight and it's an all new elf, you know, whatever. I, I don't know what I did. And then I thought, oh, you know, this all, it was all right. And then she's standing there behind the glass looking at me. And she's started looking, staring in this silence. And I thought, oh, she's going to say that, hey, that's a pretty good read i guess you know what you're doing but no, no, she, she doesn't do that, that. no no, no. <laughs> what she said, you know yeah it's little that i know but she said she said you bore easily don't you and i'm thinking oh my gosh and i stopped and i said what? holy shit i said that 
<laughs> but here's what that meant. It meant that she said, you have to make sure that every time you read that copy, because you do this day in and day out all the time, you're all, that it has to be fresh and new every time. Can't it's call like, it in. You, you cannot do, you know, uh, uh, you, you can't just, it has to be like, it's, you're seeing it for the first time because you, you and entertain I- entertain yourself. Yes, you, you don't know what we're going to say to each other from one second to the next. It has to be the same with that. It right. has to be brand new. And I went, oh, my God, that was the best money I ever. That moment was she nailed me. Mm -hmm. She hit she. That's it. And 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 she's and I, I think she's I love her. and I haven't seen her forever. But th that moment went, oh, yes, <laughs> of course. You know, so, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Of course, she told right. me my mustache has nothing to do with voiceover. So, <laughs> well, <laughs> your mustache has nothing to do with voiceover. It's <laughs> exactly what she said. So, yeah. but she she is a great coach. I mean, she's you know she really understands the psychology of it, and so she. Oh my gosh, she, she ever she's just like she dug in there with a spoon. <laughs> Here's you. Uh, exactly. I see Terry Terry Briscoe says here. Uh, were there any effects on the Megatron voice? No. Uh, that was just i was I, i'm kind of like my optimus prime character in tf animated like i'm naive and doing the best i can with, with the situation i really I, I, at that time when I, the first audition for megatron i went in and i had all the stuff and i went oh i don't know and doug parker says all right what do you got and i went uh, <clears throat> uh yes sir and i did this thing and they they called me back and then I was sitting into the callback room and, I, and finally it hit me. Hey, what if I have Anthony Hopkins, Sean Connery and a lizard? What if they had a baby? And like, how would that how would that work? And I, yeah, and I thought, yes, excellent. And sort of put a bit of a lisp on it. And they and that's the, 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 the scenes in, in further episodes. They did some stuff um, with the voice. But that was just how that happened, you know. Yeah, yeah. Well, we, we can talk a little bit about your tech. So you, you said you're, you're, you what are you working on right now? I mean, you said you talked about the Eternals. Oh, I mean, I, I know you're a busy guy. It sounds like 24 yeah. hours a day you're what, sitting in that room. What you can, yeah. what you can tell us about. Let's yeah. The, the, you um, haven't signed an NDA. For there are, yeah, there's there's a, a, a couple of. Um, uh, well, yeah, again, those are those are great. Uh, they're 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 prime time uh, shows, and uh, and and they're very funny, irreverent. They're I can't tell you, but my God, they're they, it's so cathartic to be able to laugh these days. Um, the uh, let's see, uh, God, I don't know. There's a couple of video games that are just coming out. I, I don't. There's a lot of trailers. The current trailer campaign I'm working on is the this new Harry Potter movie, The Fantastic Beasts, and it's a it's a bit of a it, it's sort of a character read um they had me uh at the beginning it was very sort of fanciful uh wizard like a uh, read but they wanted that pull that back and make it more of a traditional trailer but still have a bit of you know ride that wizard a little bit you know um and uh and uh yeah. when did trailers fall what trailers i mean i've, I've worked with david i work with you and, and so yeah. many other actors and i hear them some of them like i'm still trying to crack this trailer thing you know years and years and years of i'm still just trying i'm finally getting it's a bit it's been 10 years uh, 10 10 years of just scratching a lot of stuff maybe more probably maybe 10 to 15 years and but scratching now is like it's kind of like an audition but not yeah they want now 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 it's the point now where they're asking they're asking more and more can you get david on this can david can we have david and so it just takes a long time and it's the, my favorite thing in the world uh dan as well to uh, george is to do trailer i love as a kid i was enamored by the voice that used to come on in the movie theater coming this april it's a not you know a brand new monsters and well, uh, those guys that did that and don was a friend of mine and a mentor and and i i just thought it's a pinnacle and it's it's it you have you have this there's, there's a way to do it and, and there's a way to, um sell it but don't sell it you know i always says my my thing but uh just trying to find um the read it, it, because i'm kind of one of those this cats is i'm all over the place and and uh ashton who i just adore uh it, the, the read is just like oh my god I, I, and and howard parker and you hear them i'm kind of like all over the map and so i have to really be try and uh, uh hone in on something whatever style it is uh i don't know i'm trying to explain myself um i i i can't sound like i'm putting on a voice you know what i mean um mm -hmm. and i think the first uh the the, the 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 clint eastwood movie uh uh richard uh 
uh, about the bomb, you know, the in Atlanta, the Olympics, the bomb um, went off. Uh, Richard, mm -hmm. Richard, uh, what was his name? What was the movie? Uh, I can't remember. Um, but I, I know you're talking about him. <laughs> I did, yeah. but Warner Brothers hired Casey? me. For, uh, no, Rich, not Casey. Richard so and so. Uh, yeah. uh, and I started just talking like this. I just started getting close to the mic and, you know, a Warner Brothers picture, you know, Clint Eastwood. And I just, I didn't do anything. Right. And they hired me and they wanted, they put me on a Ben Affleck movie. And I went, oh, there's something I can hang my head. There's, it's because it's just me. It's just me doing nothing. And then uh, it took me so many years to just, to not do anything. And that's what they hired me for is me doing nothing. <laughs> like, like Seinfeld. It's exactly, <laughs> I'm doing nothing. That's all I'm doing. <laughs> you know, what I have to do, I just do nothing and they pay me. Perfect. You know, um, it took me like 25 years to just do nothing. And um, it, it's just developing a style. The Harry Potter thing is uh, this April. It's more, I don't know. Uh, it's more of a character, but it has to. I don't really know. Again, at the beginning, I told you, I said, I really don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> it's sort of, I talk and hope something happens. How's that? <laughs> Richard Jewell. Thank you, Daryl. Richard Jewell. Yes, yeah. Yes. Richard Jewell. Mm -hmm. That's all, all I did was say, Richard Jewell in theaters front. You know, it was all I needed to do. And they went, yeah, we like that. I go, damn. Okay. So, yeah, it's hard to, uh, it, it's hard to sort of, uh, just sort of think of like what I'm doing technically, but um, I enjoy the hunt, the process, and 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 the, the I, that to try and like I said to try and create something that's that's believable and has a heart and a soul and 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 uh, it's a it's a I don't think about anything else except that it's like when I ski or I'm in the gym I think about one thing only, and and it's just that when I have a clear mind I can kind of. You know, if I'm trying too hard, I can tell if I'm trying to, you know, trying to the read too hard. I'm trying. No, I, I need to just stop and come back and just do nothing. Richard Jewell. That's it. So I don't know. Does that make sense? It, I make it, no does, sense. it does a little bit. Well, uh, yeah, yeah. And we, I mean, we totally understand it. it it's you, you've just got to let go and I be you. Sort of, exactly. Yeah, that's yeah. Basically, yes. Be you. <laughs> and for many years, I was just trying to be other people. <laughs> yeah. We're talking with David K. We're talking about his career and talking about what it takes to make it in this business. And if you've got a question. All you got to do is throw it in any of the chat rooms that we've got, and we'll get to that in our next segment. So we'll be right back with David Kay on VoiceOver Body Shop. Don't go away. This is the Latin lover narrator from Jane the Virgin, Anthony Mendez, and you're enjoying Dan and George on the VoiceOver Body Shop. Well, hello there. I bet you weren't expecting to hear some big-voiced announcer guy on your new orientation training for Snapchat, were you? This is Virgin Radio. Well, okay, we're not that innocent. There's jeans for wearing and there's jeans for working. Dickies, because I ain't here to look pretty. She's a champion of progressive values, a leader for California, and a voice for America. It's smart. It's a phone. It's a smartphone. But it's so much more. It's a, the files are ready. Don't forget to pick up the eggs. What time is hockey practice? Check out this song. It's the end of the road for Rick. It's just you and me, Rick. When hope is lost. The I-8 from BMW. Who said saving the planet couldn't be stylish? Hey, it's J. Michael Collins. Bet you think I'm going to try and sell you a demo now, huh? I think they speak for themselves. But I will give you my email. It's jmichael at jmcvoiceover.com. Now, if Dan will stop waxing his mustache for a minute, we'll get back to the show. VoiceOverEssentials.com has the ultimate answer for mic safety. Look, your mic is the most valuable part of your audio chain, so protect it from boom stand disaster. It's the ABS, the Adjustable Boom Stop. It's simple, ingenious, and infinitely adjustable. The padded non-slip pouch fits almost any size boom arm. It has a unique double loop webbing system for an unlimited angle of the down strap. It works with tripod and solid round bases. A strong articulated strap keeps your boom where you want it without weights, sandbags, or knuckle-busting tightening of the boom clutch. The light gray webbing lets you mark and repeat stand settings for just the right spot for you or anyone else who uses your microphone, saving time and guesswork. This is the simple solution that simply works. You'll kick yourself for not having thought of it. Lock it in place with our ABS, the adjustable boom stop. 
Get it now at voiceoveressentials.com. I don't think there's a feeling quite like that moment when something you've auditioned for becomes something you get booked on, especially when it comes to audiobooks. You audition for an audiobook on ACX or in some other form or fashion, and then somebody says, hey, we like what you did. We want you to be our narrator. If that isn't a feeling that you've had lately because either you haven't figured out how to do audiobooks or because the efforts that you've put toward audiobooks just don't seem to be working, I've got a solution for you. Let's start with some free videos and then, if you want, registering for the ACX Masterclass. I'm David H. Lawrence, the 17th, along with Dan O'Day. I teach that class, and you can get to those free videos and to registration if you'd like at acxmasterclass.com slash join. That's acxmasterclass.com slash join. I'd love to help you get there. This is Bill Ratner, and you're enjoying Voice Over Body Shop with Dan Leonard and George Whittem. VOBS.TV. And we're back with David K. Got to get David to do uh, a couple of trailers for us, or a couple of promo lines for us, when we get the chance. When I come and fix your radio again. Yeah, that's right. (laughs) Anyway, so, so let's talk a little bit about tech. And again, yeah. if you've got a question out there for, here, yeah. for yeah, for, for David K, uh, throw it in the chat room, uh, talking about anything that, you know, you might want to ask him about, you know, the stuff that he does. So, George, this is sort of your department. David, what do you what do you have in there? You've got a really expensive microphone and you're, you're in a new a new place. And uh, tell us about what technically you're using in there. Uh, technically, um Gosh, uh, th- thank God for George, by the way. Uh, we'll let him explain that. it then. <laughs> um, the, uh, yeah, yeah I, I was using years ago um, U, uh, U67s. I just fell in love with them. Um, it, it's, it's the, the resonance, and they were a microphone that you know, they used for baritone sax, you know, basically. But uh, um, a lot of the animation shows were out earlier when I was in, in Vancouver was uh, the U87s were there, uh, sometimes the TLMs. Um, this mic is a Peluso P67 because we were having trouble with the U67s and the fact that we would, you know, the mic would be at Charlie Bowles is half the time being being fixed. They're wonderful sounding. They're just delightful mics. I just love them. But they're problematic in the fact that, you know, tubes and things and George, you know, and you get a little fitzing and fuzzing and things happen. You're like, oh, my God. It's the, you're, you're. So we tried to find a mic that would is as closely possible uh, emulate and, and, and be that that sound there's a sound that I, I i like to hear that roll off or that uh and uh and i and I, i'm a professional so i said i want the best tools and so let's find the best mic and uh and i just love these is made here is, is it connecticut uh, george made in uh, uh i think it's virginia uh, actually virginia yeah but, and they just i just oh my god i love these things i've one in a place in Kelowna that you know um uh, this one here, but if I'm on the road, I use um, the standard uh, Sennheiser shotgun uh, because 416. I use that in the car. I use yeah. that in the car. I use that in, in the, in the tri booth. Uh, but I take this as much as possible with me if I'm going to be at a, you know somewhere a longer period of time. Um, I just because I can because I go from like uh, in a world you know quietly to screaming you know and and it's and things have to it has to handle all that stuff and. Uh, I don't want to have any any issues. And with that, so the Apollo Twin uh, here that George has set up, and we're going through Allen and Heath, right, George? And yeah, uh, it's not it's not running the way a lot of people would think it's no, running. It's, it's not different. going Mike Twin Apollo Twin mixer. Yeah, it's actually going straight from the mic into the mixer directly into channel one, and we're we're using the built-in compressor on the Allen and Heath, and it yeah. it's yeah. an amazing compressor. It's yeah, it's, so... it's slightly. It's just a slight compression. A lot, a lot of video games and a lot of animation. That you know, I just, I'll just, I'll just take it off. Take the gain out, or just yeah. turn it off entirely. Yeah, just yeah. And, it, and it's just, but it gives it just a little bit of you know. It's I, I don't uh, use too much at all. That's, that was my thing to use. I want it clean, 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 clean. Um, and we're so, using uh, the Apollo for a while. It might still be, but I can't remember. But we're using it yeah. as as the interface, but we're also using it as the expander. We're using it to just drop down the noise floor a little bit. Because there's this fan in that rack that's in there that was all. Oh, there's no fan in here anymore. We right? unplugged it. We unplugged yeah. the fan because <laughs> we, we don't need. Like there's stuff in here. We really we, don't I need have it. Stuff in here we don't even need and don't even use. I have like the LA three A. Well, in, in Cologne, in in Canada, we have the. Uh, there's a bit of a fan. There's a noise sort of that comes from the building or whatever. Yes. 
And so yes. we had to put that gate in. Yes. Um, and not too many people, there's very, very few people ever even hear, you know, that can sort of hear. Yeah. But uh, it's just, it, it's, it's, it's a comfort level too. Uh, it's, I need to, uh, and you know, I'm very, very uh, particular about how I feel in here because I need, this needs yeah. to be a, this creative space. I don't want any like things that, I don't want anything that I don't feel like, uh, no, I don't, what's that, you know, I'll move things on my desk because I just don't, I ne it needs to be a certain way. I'm, I'm kind of nuts like that. I've been doing it for, you know, 30, 35 years, going on 40, whatever it is. And uh, that's just the way I am. I'm, I'm, I'm an idiot. Yeah. Well, you've, you've, got this, you've, you've got this thing where George was showing me where you, you have a volume control for your headphones that you, you play with constantly. Guess right? where that I don't usually animation. It's off. Everything's off. I don't. Right. But I usually I, I one ear is off because I need to hear the, the natural sound and I need to sort of monitor some characters and some things I need to hear. And it's an old radio thing, Dan. It's like a, it was the pots. I needed yeah, to have the a level. Pot. Yeah. I ride the level because when you're in radio, you know, you turn the music up and 75 degrees down. Oh, how about, how about, how about, and you're moving the, the dial off and you, you can hear the roll off and it just sounds kind of uh, trying to hit the post. It's an old habit. And sometimes you use it, sometimes I don't, but it needs to be there because it's my little, what do you call it? An idiosyncrasy, George? Idiosyncrasy. And sometimes like, it's like a, it's like um, a blanket. Yeah, it's, it's like a line is blanket. It's a Linus blanket. A security blanket. Yeah. <laughs> security blanket. It's and part like, of your technique. It's just, it's a, it's a proprietary I, I, technique. You don't know. However, however it happens. Uh, there's a, I see a couple of questions here. Uh, Terry Briscoe said, have you ever done a trailer for the production you were actually in? Yes, Eternals. I did the, uh, the UK trailers for, for the Eternals and I was in the movie, which is weird. Uh, who else says uh, optic uh, inner? Oh yeah. Fiber optic. Do we have, yeah, we have fiber optic here. Right, George? Yeah. Yeah. I it's think so. Team. Just yeah, bad cell team. coverage, I might note. Uh, uh, yeah, cell coverage up front <laughs> sucks. <laughs> I'm trying to get cell to your house, and you get you sucks. give me the wrong address. I'm like, what? What? Yeah, the I phone didn't give doesn't wrong work. Address. I don't know what's going on. Uh, we got a question here from Play the Voice. It goes, uh, what's the best way to stand out in auditions in a good way? Which I think is a great question for you because you were talking about, you know, you started auditioning and you started to book. What is it? Do you think that you're doing? that that gets you there oh gosh it's it's uh it is that the realism i guess that that, that, that I, I but that didn't come till later till i really sort of figured cam and nist my my one of my great agents would say dk you got to connect it more connect it more and i go why what, what are you connected what the fuck does that mean connect and, then, and it was and then years later i go oh right connect like ground it like it's a it's a human soul heart to breathe you know real real okay um uh I, I don't know it's it's a it's a feel when you when you see some copy when you see a character or you see a commercial it's just the believability of it i i, I don't know it, it's gosh I, I wish i had an answer because it if it's written well i love when a, when a piece of copy is written well we all we've all had those piece of copy that you just like it's like the clock cogs in the wheel just don't that it's not working it's horrible uh and then when copy is written well you're like wow this is fun you can kind of dig into it um, it's being able to, <clears throat> I don't know, I'm trying to, an example of uh, NFL, Fox Sports, they have amazing writers and the NFL uh, guys do, they, they write some amazing copy and it's, and even NASCAR and so that they're just great writers over there, that team. And it's storytelling at its, at its base. And to, to be able to tell a story and to picture you telling a story too in a personal way, um, it's sort of to try and find a placement like um, the Princess Bride. Remember the Princess Bride? Uh, and the, the narrator was uh, Peter. Uh, what's Peter his Falk. name? Peter Falk. Peter Falk. Yeah. You know, and he had that thing. And so I would say, listen to Peter Falk, even if it doesn't even be relevant to what you're doing. Listen to how he's telling a story. It just there's there's a quality to his voice. There's 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 a little heart. You know, it's something about the way he tells a story that's so believable. And if you can bring that to whatever you're doing. Watch this, Princess Bride. Yeah. Isn't that him in that? Prince, yeah. yeah. He's, he's the grandfather. He's the grandfather. Yeah. Let narrates me tell the whole story. story. And if you listen and to I'm it. I'm just you know, curious about this. Yeah. yeah. Just curious. <laughs> it's just tell a story. Like, you know, be intimate with the microphone. Like, really, you know, learn to, to be intimate with this thing. Um, it's your friend. Um and and try and really 
I don't know, be as much truth as you can bring to anything you do. Um, not just read the copy, but dig into it. I don't know how, how, to, how to explain that. Um, it just sort of took me so damn long to figure it. It's like, you know, it took me so long to get good at skiing and to get good at tennis and squash. And, and I forgot the, the blood, sweat and tears it took just to get to the point where I'm, you know, that the, they still hire me. It's, I, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not. I'm not much help. This I was going to say. This is not, not helpful. Coach. Uh, this is not helpful. <laughs> I, I'm a horrible coach. That's why. That's why they don't have me to these voiceover things. Because I don't know how to. How do I explain this? Um, it just oozes out of you. It's a yeah, show right. about nothing. No. I, I here. Here's here's an exercise I do, and I, and I've taught a couple of times. And and it's uh, an acting teacher gave me this exercise. And she's brilliant. Shay Hampton back in Vancouver. She used to give us cold reads. And there used to be a scene, and the two actors would across from each other, and we'd stare at each other. And that's uncomfortable to do. We'd stare at each other. You just look at them. You look at you know, right in the eyes. It's tough to do to connect. That's the connection. If you can sit there, and then when you kind of both feel like you're ready, maybe one starts to laugh a bit, and they're, oh, they're like, "That's a true emotion." So at that point, you turn the copy over and you start. And if you're in the middle of a laugh, you're like, <laughs> "How did you? Why? Why did you do that to me?" And so, oh, my God, there's a real moment. And so the person turns over his and, and delivers their line. And because, we, again, we don't know what we're going to say to each other. Like Maurice Tobias said, you know, you bore easily. You got to make it fresh. Every time you do it, it's got to be uh, different. It's got to be the first time you've ever seen it, the first conversation you've ever had. If you can bring that into anything you do, uh, that's the, a freshness and a, and a, and a um, that's oh, what's the word again? See, I'm, I'm, I'm shy of words. Uh, I'm not very good at words. I should find a career that... Doesn't use words? <laughs> yeah, that, that sort or, of defeats or, or, the purpose, though. Or yeah, somebody but... else writes them for you, maybe, <laughs> perhaps? Is that is yeah. That what you're looking for? Yeah, yeah I guess. <laughs> I, uh, I, I, if somebody says Terry should do a script analysis, no, you know what? And this is going to this is gonna shock you. No. Uh, and here's the reason I don't. It used to drive me nuts. I'd go in when I when we're doing. We used to go in person and do auditions. We used to uh, somebody in the room going, uh, walking around, going, oh, da, 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 and I go, oh, shut up, stop talking, and I have to go out of the room. I'm hearing these people nattering. It, sometimes it's good just like the cold read. To look, start roll the roll the mic, roll the, uh, the the file, and start talking, and see if anything happens. You see if anything. Sometimes magic happens because it's the first time you're seeing it. You don't have chance to kind of market and do it up. Now, some people market and do it. That's their thing. My thing is I want to get into it right away and see if anything happens. If it doesn't, okay, let's let's work on it. Let's let's dig in. Let's see what other, you know, uh, voice quality or maybe, you know, if I if I rough my voice up a bit and, you know, do a little older, maybe add a little age to it and, uh, you know, be a storyteller and sort of, uh, you know, here's my grandfather and I'm going to tell, you know, uh, I got a surprise for you kids and, and Christmas morning, you know, whatever. Try and add layers to it, but I would suggest just just read it uh, and see if anything happens. Um, that's how I do it. I don't. Uh, a lot of times, <laughs> George, you see me work. Oh Christ, I got to get this done. Boom. And that's only because I've been doing it for forty years. Uh, but that's how I do it. Uh, you know. Do you, there's one last question. I know you got to go. Daryl yeah. asked this. Daryl. Daryl. Daryl's went kind of a long way around to ask you basically this it's just yeah. the last part <laughs> what do you do to keep your voice great like getting to to deal with mouth clicks and do you use anything that you take or do you have a regimen to keep your voice yeah, tuned every... and not have mouth noise and all the other this stuff? is going to be boring but yeah i always have a glass of water in here um mm -hmm. but first thing in the morning three glasses of water before i even you know hit, hit the floor mm -hmm. um because I, because I work out all the time and I was sweating all the time. So I'm, I'm dehydrating myself all the time. Uh, I'm studying wine. So that's even an extra hydration. I, I do a gallon a day. I do a gallon of water a day, um, every day. And that is really important. And that'll get rid of the mouth clicks and that'll keep you, uh, if you ever notice you do the three glass of water in the morning, you start to, your nose starts to run because you're getting, you're, you're hydrating. It's really important to be high in this, in our dry climate out here. Good Lord, you know, and especially now, but, and I also, I use alkalol, which is a, a nasal mm -hmm. rinse every night before bed, little thing, down the there, thing. There it there is. It is. <laughs> I am so such a fan of that. Um, and so that, 
uh, keeping it. I mean, literally uh, silly stuff like, you know, keeping your teeth clean and then doing the mouthwash and doing the alcohol and and drink a ton of water. It's so important. That's why there's all those water bottles in there when you go into the studio. <laughs> that's a reason for that. But yeah, yeah, that's how I, I, I keep <laughs> those. It. Those are good tips and ones that I should probably do. And also very good right before you go to the urologist as well. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. David, I know you got you got to get rolling. I'm on so us sorry. Here. I, I hope I. Uh, no, you've been, been great. Some you... little thing of wisdom. Of, I don't know. I'm never that's, sure. If you get one good thing out of a show then it's, it's golden. It's cool. So anyway, anyway, thanks for being with us. And uh, we look forward to uh, whatever it is that you're doing next. And uh, we'll talk to you again real soon. See you Thank Thursday, you so David. You. Yeah, so I see co- Thursday. If, if I don't have COVID, yeah. I'll see you Thursday. Everything is broken. You have to come and fix it. <laughs> <laughs> All righty. David K. everybody. We'll be right back to wrap things up and rack it up for Tech Talk right after these messages. Bye. See ya. You're still watching VLBS? In these modern times, every business needs a website. When you need a website for your voice acting business, there's only one place to go. Like the name says, voiceactorwebsites.com. Their experience in this niche webmaster market gives them the ability to quickly and easily get you from concept to live online in a much shorter time. When you contact voiceactorwebsites.com, Their team of experts and designers really get to know you and what your needs are. They work with you to highlight what you do. Then they create an easily navigable website for your potential clients to get the big picture of who you are and how your voice is the one for them. Plus, VoiceActorWebsites.com has other great resources like their practice script library and other resources to help your voiceover career flourish. Don't try it yourself. Go with the pros. VoiceActorWebsites.com, where your VO website shouldn't be a pain in the you-know-what. It's time to thank Source Elements because they keep sending us money to talk about Source Connect. We appreciate that. And Source Connect is a uh, tool of the pros. It's really the one that is still requested by the biggest budget gigs out there. It's the one that the studio producers like to use because the audio comes right into the track in Pro Tools. They can immediately play it back for the client. The mix is being done during the session. That's what they like. And that kind of workflow is a key to why Source Connect is so popular. It's also so great because it maintains super high quality audio consistently. Now, occasionally you can have dropouts in Source Connect. It does happen. But that's okay because it also has its own built-in backup audio called Q Manager. Now, it's it just does it automatically. If as long as Q Manager is logged in and the producers on Source Connect Pro, he can get that audio, and it is a remarkable function of being able to automatically restore missed audio or dropped audio due to internet issues. It's just all built in. And as an actor, you don't have to worry about how that works. It just it's all being done on the back end by the server and by the producer. Really great stuff. Anyway, get it get it on your system if you want to be available for the big jobs. You just it's just a tool you have to have, but you also have to have the studio to go with it. Everything, it's a complete package. You have to have all of those elements working. So, go get a demo, go to Source Elements, uh, get their 15-day trial so you can start learning how to use it. Talk to Dan and I, make sure your studio sounds the way it needs to sound so you're ready to go and start being a pro. I can't say it any other way. It's just, it's one of those things. Yeah. Does every job need it? No, but it really shows up on your resume, your website, whatever, as saying, I'm really taking this stuff seriously. I know I want to do those big gigs and I'm here for you. Anyway, Source Connect. Thanks again, Source Elements. And we'll be back to wrap it up in a second. Yeah, hi, this is Carlos Ellis Rocky, the voice of Rocco, and you're watching Voice Over Body Shop. Wow. Now, see, that was... He, he thinks he's not saying anything, but he was... You know, David Kay was demonstrating to us for 45 minutes what it is he does. You yeah. Know, it's very flow of thought, and, uh, you know, it's a very... It's a, it's a cool way to approach the business, I guess. It's also really cool that he has a, a space that he can be on the show in his actual performance space. We can hear in him, In front yeah. of his actual microphone, 
You can see this. That's exactly where he is when he does his thing. He forgot to turn on his light panel. He has a, he has an LED panel. Hey, I put in great. there. Yeah, but it was still fine. Yeah, yeah no, it was uh, it was always a pleasure. He's, yeah, it, good, he's, a good good example of mic technique. You know, if you're it if was you were actually, watching the video, you know, which we'll talk about in tech talk uh, next week. But uh, it you know it's important to to understand. You know, this guy. It's very, very, it's like a paintbrush and you got to learn how to use it. And, you know, when do you talk close to it and when do you back off and, and that sort of thing. So. Andrew Peters uh, does, does a podcast with me. He, he's like, I want to make a pop screen with an ear on it because I think of that thing like an ear. Right. That microphone is an ear. Like it, it changes the way I think about how I dress the microphone. Absolutely. We, you know, do you always talk into somebody's ear all the time? Every like, no, you don't no. always talk into their <laughs> ear. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Anyway, uh, next week on this very show, you should be here. Uh, and you can stick around if you're watching live and you can be, participate live. And we'd love to have your questions. We're going to have Tech Talk number 75, which will actually mark the 11th year of George and I actually doing this. Believe it or don't. Uh, so, uh, that's going to be interesting. We've got lots of cool stuff to talk about on that. Who are our donors of the week? I think we have some familiar names. It's they great. usually are, and we folks, appreciate it. Yeah, and all these folks are subscribers, so, uh, these names we read all the time. And, uh, first on the list here is Philip Sapir. Tom Pinto. Shelly Avellino. George Whitham, your dad. Brian Page. <laughs> Uh, Patty Gibbons. Rob Ryder. Greg Thomas. Thanks, Greg. A Doctor Voice. Ant Land Productions. Shauna Pennington Baird. Martha Kahn, who will be with us in two weeks. Awesome. Don Griffith. Trey Mosley, a Trey. Diana Birdsall. And Sandra Manwiller. Uh, we, you know, if you need, if you want to donate to the show, if you feel you're getting value out of this, um. Uh, you know, it's like public television or public it's radio. Over there somewhere. There's a, there's a donate button there on the website if you're watching over there. Uh, join up and, you know, a, a dollar a month, $10 a month. You can send us 100 but and we won't complain, but, you know, it's not absolutely <laughs> necessary. Uh, we we, we got to start coming up with gifts for our donors again. You know, maybe, uh, you know, a handbag. <laughs> Anybody need any more tote bags by chance? Tote bags. <laughs> Yikes. Or another coffee cup. That's right. Now you've got you've got office hours. I happened to s stick my nose in there yesterday because I, you know, I'm you know, a clubhouse. It pops up on my phone. Oh, George is doing. Something. Oh yeah, it's yeah. Doing, didn't say anything, but you know. Yeah, office hours. Yeah, I only do it twice a week for half an hour at a time. So it's really office half hours. Um, but it's uh, it's for anybody who's ever booked a service with me uh, from any anything at all. You're 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 a client. And you're welcome to join. It's a private uh, clubhouse room. You can just go on there and request to join it. Uh, and uh, if you're a client, I'll let you in. And we just, it's just, it's pretty free form. Just talking a little bit like we do on the show. But it's really more say. about getting getting through tech questions really quickly. Sometimes people have things that are pressing that, you know, the timing works out great. And I can answer them. This morning I was answering questions for Lori Allen about her computer and what the new one she should buy is and all this kind of stuff. So, yeah, yeah the new thing that we're doing. Cool. Well, we need to thank our sponsors as well, because without them, this would just be a blank page. Uh, anyway, it would be a uh, dial tone. It, yeah. <laughs> Remember dial tones? I was <laughs> a landline tones, right? anymore. It's right. two tones that make a dial tone, right? A higher and a lower one. Right. You do the higher one, I'll do the lower one. Mm. That's no, not quite that, right. That doesn't sound anywhere near correct. Uh, <laughs> anyway, we need to thank our sponsors like Harlan <laughs> Hogan's VoiceOver Essentials. VoiceOver Extra. Source Elements. VOHeroes.com. VoiceActorWebsites.com. And JMC Demos. All right. Uh, thanks to Jeff Holman for holding the fort down in the chat room and getting those questions I saw him on a commercial for a show on HBO Max called Minx. Oh, he's, that's right. He's on another it one. It was just man. an ad popped. I don't even have HBO Max, but I saw the ad, and it was like one of those hey, ads where they show the different characters. I'm like, there he is. <laughs> that's cool. Yeah. Uh, our thanks to Sue Merlino, our amazing technical director who just switches the shots and does all the things, and she does it from her desk in Burbank. Not, <laughs> not even here. We'll get together soon.
Yes. And Lee Penny, who we know is watching out there just for being Lee Penny. Well, we're going <laughs> to rack it up for Tech Talk, and uh, we got lots of cool stuff to cover. If you have a question about voiceover studio technology, you know, microphones and all the equipment that we use that, you know, most of it that we probably shouldn't be using, uh, throw those in the chat room and we will get to those questions because that's one of the things that drives our show and we really appreciate it. Well, that's going to do it for this week. A little, little shorter than usual, but David K. had to go running off and we, we appreciate uh, him joining us. Mm-hmm. Uh, but uh, Tech Talk next. And that's going to do it for VoiceOver Body Shop uh, this week. Uh, not an easy business. There's a lot to learn, and you got to find out who you are. But when it comes to your audio, if it sounds good. Oh, oh it is good. That's right. I'm Dan Leonard. I'm George Woodham. And this is VoiceOver. Body Shop. Or VO. BS. BS. All right. We'll be right back with Tech Talk. But thanks for watching.